Hello there, friend. Welcome to the seventh video in our Lent prayer meditation series. This video helps us prepare for Holy Week. On his journey to the cross, after the Last Supper, Jesus goes to the Garden of Gethsemane and prays. He brings some of his close disciples with him to keep him company, and, and that's the place we enter into in this practice. Over the next four videos, we'll be using a tool called Imaginative Prayer. And in this practice, we'll be using our imaginations to place ourselves as a companion of Jesus, right alongside him in the garden. In future videos, we'll position ourselves away from him and then in front of him, receiving from him. But for now, as always, begin to settle into your body, begin to deepen your breath, and let's begin. Find yourself in your body right now. Hopefully you're in a comfortable position, a space where you can just soften your shoulders away from your ears, where you can drop your breath into your belly, where your eyes can be closed so that the muscles in your face can let go. Notice the sensations that arise as you sit here. Perhaps it's a very physical sensation of discomfort in your body. Perhaps it's a racing heart or shallow breathing, anxiety from this practice of stillness, silence, and solitude. As we enter into Holy Week, we'll be using the tool of imaginative prayer to draw near to the heart of God as we journey with Jesus to the cross and up from the grave. And in today's practice, we'll sit with Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane. After his last supper with the disciples, he goes up on this mountainside to pray. And there are many things that are unique about this experience, and you can read about them in the Gospel accounts. For the sake of time, I'll just summarize it here. But Jesus goes up this mountain to pray, and this is something that Jesus does many times throughout his ministry. We read often in the gospel stories about Jesus slipping away from the crowds to be alone in prayer with the Father. But on this night, Jesus does not want to be alone. He brings three of his closest disciples with him, and he says, Stay here with me. Bear this burden with me while I go and pray. And Jesus goes and prays, and he's in agony with the Father about what's to come. And then he goes back to his friends, and he finds them asleep, and he's so hurt. He wakes them up, and he says, keep watch. And he goes off again, and he prays, agonizing, tortured by what's to come. And again, he comes back. He finds his disciples asleep, and this happens again. And Luke, who's a physician, writes that Jesus was sweating blood. He was in such torment. Perhaps that feeling is not unfamiliar to you. Perhaps that feeling of being afraid to be alone with God is familiar to you. Perhaps you've never felt safe to admit that, but there have been moments when you can't face God alone, where you feel like you need protection or at least comfort. And friend, I'm not here to tell you the rightness or the wrongness about that, except to point out that that was Jesus' experience as well. Jesus who had the most intimate relationship with the Father than any person who's walked this earth, who taught us to call him Abba, Father. He's not some far-off God, but he is a, a, someone in deep, intimate relationship with us. Jesus himself needed companionship as he prayed that evening. 
And so today, my friend, can you be that companion with Jesus in this garden? In future videos, we will stand away from and look at Jesus or we will receive from Jesus. But in this practice today, can we minister to Jesus in his suffering? Perhaps you can even identify with him in this agonizing anticipation he feels. The utter grief that overwhelms him. The anxiety that grips so strongly that the body has this very physical response of sweat mixed with blood. Can you sit with Jesus in that space? What this account of Jesus' final hours reminds me of is the humanity of Jesus. The prophet Isaiah, hundreds and hundreds of years before, wrote that he is a man well acquainted with our sufferings. And we see this in the garden tonight. I often wonder if the torment of the anticipation of the horror to come was even worse. It's that wrestling of surrender of saying, not my will, but yours be done, not knowing how hard the journey ahead will be. In the humanity of Jesus, can you find your own sorrow, grief, and pain? Thomas Merton, who is a teacher on contemplative prayer, writes that it's not so much a way to find God as a way of resting in Him who we found. So in these final few moments together, as we minister to and alongside Jesus, as we place ourselves in this garden of our own pain and grief, or ministering with Jesus alongside His Can you rest in him who you have found? Oh, Jesus, how we love you. How we're left speechless at the journey that you took towards the cross on our behalf in such obedience and surrender to the Father. We ask that you be close to us in our own anxiety, grief, and eager anticipation of what's to come. May we be reminded that you are well acquainted with our sorrows and suffering. And in that, we find a deeper companionship with you than we had before. We trust you, Father. We love you, Jesus. And we thank you, Holy Spirit. Amen.